we're joined this morning by Rod Jackson. Rod, welcome and thanks for your talk this morning. It was really, really interesting. I love mm -hmm. how you still got your sleeves rolled up. Oh yes, I yeah. was going in for a fight, so I <laughs> rolled them up. Yeah, That's I rolled great. them up. Now after your talk, I went and got my cholesterol checked. Ah. I brought the results here, I hope that's okay. No, but not at look all. at this. This is fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, that's perfect. Your yeah. your ratio of two, that's that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, just no, my no, cholesterol so low it couldn't pick up. Yep. No no. Um uh, <laughs> cool. You know, well done. So yeah. keep you're on the right. Yeah, you're on right. the right path. So I feel yeah. like I'm now expert enough to talk about what we're going to talk yeah. about today. <laughs> but it is interesting if you look at that. So yeah. um, so your uh, total. Can we share your total cholesterol? Oh, I'm actually under health insurance. But. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, you, um, your that is so far below the average of 25 years ago. I mean, 25 years ago, um, I would have expected this to be a third higher. And, and it would have been normal. Mm. And, and what you've got here is so much lower, and I'd say that that's normal now. So without giving away what it is, um, <laughs> you know, that's the new norm. Yeah. Um, uh, good lipids yeah. are the new norm in New Zealand. Mm. We've, we've made huge, huge progress. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's talk about the past. So you mm. mentioned 1967. 1967. Yeah, you saw the peak of the coronary epidemic. Yeah. Since that time, yeah. there's been a massive, massive drop. Yeah, 3% a year um, night now. 90% lower. It's incredible, in, isn't it? It's, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah. When, you know, when I tell people that, I have to say, that's 90%. I'm not saying 9%, that's 90% lower. It, it's, it's, it's unprecedented. You know, when, when I was, well, 1967, I was in the third form, and I still remember, our I had a neighbour who had a heart attack, dropped dead in his 50s. Mm. It was normal practice. In fact, the Heart Foundation was established in, I think, 1968, Partly because of all the middle-aged cardiologists dropping dead. Really? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. And in 60, by sixty-eight, they said we've had enough. Mm -hmm. We 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 need to do something. Mm. And um, and as I said in my talk, when I was practicing, when I was working in a coronary care unit in Middlemore Hospital in nineteen seventy-eight, uh, we had an unwritten rule that we wouldn't let anyone into our coronary care unit over the age of seventy because we were so full. With people under the age of 70 mm. and today it's the opposite there yep. you know you still see them under 70 but they are the exception yeah I mean, it's radical change radical completely change. isn't it? and you went through a range of possible de determinants yeah. so you talked about that you showed data you showed the coronary drop yeah you showed smoking, smoking. yeah you showed medical care you yeah, showed so blood statins. pressure yeah. Yeah, and statins yeah what is it so so what what's if you look at the totality of the evidence the underlying cause of coronary disease is a diet high in saturated fat. If you look around the world, there are no countries where saturated fat um, is, is where it's low, where the consumption is low, that have much coronary heart disease. And, and Japan is the really nice example. So Japan in the 60s, 70s, and even up to the 80s, heavy smokers, mm. high blood pressure, mm. no coronary heart disease. Well, one one sixth <laughs> of the New Zealand, or one fifth, at least, uh, yeah, about one fifth of the New Zealand coronary heart disease rates. And that's because you really have to bathe your arteries in saturated fat. And once you've done that, smoking, raised blood pressure, diabetes, so high blood glucose, are all important additional risk factors. But the underlying risk factor is coronary heart disease, is, is, is saturated fat. And if you look at what's happened in New Zealand, the only risk factor change that fits with that decline is the decline in saturated fat. Yes, smoking's had an effect, yes, blood pressure's had an effect, but none of them account for the increasing, we continue to increase in 67, and then we started dropping. And the only factor that fits with that decline is our reduction in saturated fat. We've halved our butter consumption, although it's flatlined since 2000. Mm -hmm. And I made a comment that I think that since 2000, it's statins that um, are dealing with our confusion about saturated fat. Yeah. You know, we've in, we're slowly increasing our butter consumption. Thank God for sca you know for statins in, in this decade, but uh, butter's gone down by by half, and it's responsible for about. 20 to 25 percent of all of our saturated fat consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, lamb and beef have halved, and they're the other major contributors to our saturated mm -hmm. fat consumption. And they've plummeted, and, mm -hmm. and it's the only factor that fits nicely with the evidence. 
The others have had effects, but the major impact has been a, a dark, you know, low in saturated fat. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to me, the reason why that's so important to get across is because of the high fat, low carb brigade. Yeah. I was just about to ask uh, which you're going to ask that. about, and, yeah. and we need to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. And I actually, you know, changed my talk, you know, focused on that issue because that's what we're yeah. hearing all about. Yeah, because yeah. I remember you saying no butter only yeah. meat on your birthday. Yeah, butter, on, well, butter, <laughs> butter on your birthday. It was butter on your birthday. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I, that was to that was to really, and you remember that. Mm. But I guess if you wanted to have, if if I was to give my actual view about butter, I would say. It should be a treat food like ice cream. Um, not an everyday. Butter shouldn't be an everyday food. It's a. It should be a treat food. Mm. You go out, you know, um, to a nice dinner and there's some, you know, some sort of smoked butter or something. Or on a Saturday morning when you have some nice yep. French, lo you know, loaf of bread. You know, I, it should be a treat. It's a treat food. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So um, let's touch on this high fat diet. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so everyone knows about high fat low carb mm -hmm. diets i mean because the media love it because the high fat low carb people say the experts were wrong they got it completely wrong all fat is good all carbs are bad and that is so wrong <laughs> it's so wrong um it's well actually should i say it's half wrong yeah i agree <laughs> it's half wrong it's yeah. half wrong so saying all fats are good is so wrong but th there's no doubt that a diet higher in fat and lower in refined carbohydrates is quite an effective weight reducing mm -hmm. diet but if you have a high fat diet you don't actually have to have a high saturated fat diet and that's where i believe the high fat low carb um, brigade advocates have got it so wrong yeah yeah and so you know one of the speakers um on on the panel grant schofield you know he's been seen and he's had photos taken taken of him eating sausages and um, there have been descriptions of him walking through his uh canteen um in his you know at, at his university drinking cream now i think that's so inappropriate if if he was adding olive oil to his food, if he was using healthy fats, avocados mm -hmm. and these other things, mm -hmm. I would be behind him. But it's it's this it's this kind of message that there's nothing wrong with saturated fat. That is that I believe is so wrong and damaging. So you agree with the high fat diet if it's good uh, higher. fats? Higher fat. So yeah. so if you if you look at the extreme high fat low carb diets, it's like seventy percent fat, mm -hmm. sixty percent fat. That's extreme, mm -hmm. and uh, there are no natural free living populations to eat a diet that high yeah. in saturated fat. Yeah. But a, a diet with forty percent, thirty five to forty percent mm -hmm. fat, I support that. Yeah. I, I support that. It's just what that fat is. It's just what that fat is. And it is what I, I, I would make the point is that if, if you go back to the early 60s, the, the message, the health message was eat less saturated fat. It wasn't eat less fat. Mm. So in the 60s and 70s, it was eat less saturated fat. What happened in the 1980s is uh, there were a number of studies of uh, fat and cancer which suggested that any fat increase the risk of cancer. Mm. So that eat less saturated fat message got simplified to eat less fat. And that I think was a problem. And it, that's where the high fat, low carb people have got a point. Mm. Okay. But they've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, I agree. Um, coconut oil. Coconut. So <laughs> now let's, let's be clear. It's not coconut oil unless you refine it. In its natural state, it's solid at room temperature. Mm. And you know, the, when we talk about fats and oils, a fat is something that's solid or semi-solid semi at room temperature, and oil is something that's liquid at room, at room temperature. Unrefined coconut fat is solid at room temperature. It's saturated. Um, there are many trials, short-term dietary trials, that show that if you replace um, uh, unsaturated fats with coconut fat, your LDL goes up, your goes bad up. cholesterol goes up. It is not a sensible thing to increase your coconut fat intake. And, and again, one of, one of the points I often make to people, because I get, you know, when I say 
the evidence is not there, it's a saturated fat. And, and you hear stories like, well, you know, it's, it's this medium chain fat and it's got a high burning point. Um, one of the things I ask them is, do you know any free living populations who eat a lot of saturated fat, uh, a lot of coconut fat? Well, it's actually Sri Lanka, uh, southern India, uh, the Philippines, and to a lesser extent, the Pacific Islanders. Mm. And their heart disease rates are high. Mm. Um, I, I, it, it, it's, I, I have no idea how coconut fat became a health fad. It's not based on good evidence. Yeah. And, and what I say to people, don't put it in your mouth, put it on your skin. Mm. Yeah. Now, one of the last questions I want to ask you was, because I didn't quite make the correlation myself. I was hoping you could help with yeah. this. We got this decreasing coronary heart disease yeah. trend. Yeah. But you mentioned diabetes. Yeah. So so diabetes, which is um, so we're getting fatter. I mean, we know that, and the evidence and and uh, diabetes is really just a version of being overweight. And the correlation between overweight and obesity, uh, between overweight and diabetes, is is very strong, very, very strong. So if we get fatter, your blood glucose goes up, we diagnose more diabetes. Okay, so what we're seeing at the moment, we're, we're seeing this coronary heart disease still declining, although we're getting to the point where it looks like it's leveling off, and I think it's going to increase. And so what's happened is that we, up until very recently, we've taken on all the good messages. Eat less saturated fat, don't smoke, Eat less salt. Make sure your blood pressure, your lipids, etc., are treated. Every all most of the risk factors for coronary disease are coming down. But diabetes, obesity, and diabetes are risk factors for coronary. Disease. But we've got, you know, three out of the four major risk factors are coming down. We've got one that's going up. And until now, the ones that are coming down have overwhelmed <laughs> the one <laughs> in effect that's going up. But my concern is that we're headed for a situation where people are now confused about what to eat. We're going to start seeing their saturated fat consumption go up. Mm -hmm. We are already. Mm -hmm. Their lipids may start going up again. That combined with increasing diabetes mm -hmm. combined is going to increase our mm -hmm. coronary heart disease rate. So, so what we need to do is we need to maintain the good things we're doing. Yeah. Keep on reducing saturated fat consumption, um, but we need to deal with obesity. Very complex dealing with mm -hmm. obesity, and I think a higher fat, lower carb, lower refined carb diet is one of the um, ways of dealing with it. Lovely. Thanks so much for coming along today, Rod. Yeah, you're That's very a, welcome. Thank you. <laughs>